Okay, I'm going to make a quick tutorial on uh, Surface Agent 46. Um, I really figured out how to do the throw, how to get pace, and just how to strafe through the level. Um, I'm not going to go too much into detail about actually doing the door open. Um, I'll talk briefly about it when I get there, but um, there isn't a whole lot to say other than you just sort of practice it and you get a feel for opening the door. So I'm just going to go through two runs, uh, basically both 46 pace. Um, one is a 46 fail that I had, and then one is the actual 46 I had. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So I recommend taping down C up and C right. I sort of hold the buttons down a little bit while I'm you know, going, uh, just to make sure they don't lift up. So strafe really well here. It's pretty self-explanatory. You want to be very close to the wall. But uh, when you get to this part where there's a little crease in the, in the wall, you want to be pretty close to it and kind of parallel to the wall. Um, you don't want to be diverging too far away because then you're going to end up going too far right up to the hut and if you're too close to this you're going to end up hitting the hut. So this really comes down to just some experience um, but anything like this is good. Uh, you can see other 46s also for a very similar line uh, to going past the hut. Um, so all this stuff is typical so now here is when I get to this like segment in the snow there's going to be a little dot and you kind of want to have maybe just past it let me see if I can get back to it you want to have the dot right here you want this to be anywhere from I would say anywhere around the middle is good of your screen or anywhere near the rightish to your screen is all right if it's too far to the left uh, that means you're going a bit right, but it's not the end of the world. Um, I, I actually figured out that this particular line isn't too picky. If you go a little bit too far right, um, that's no big deal. If you go too far left, then it's kind of a problem because that means you're going to run to the hut, which I think loses more time than accidentally going a bit right. So I kind of adjust my line a little bit, and I probably made myself go a little right because because the dot the dark spot was to the right of my like near the mine. Uh, that meant I was too far left, so I adjusted right just a little bit. So that doesn't really matter. What matters is this part here. So it's hard to see, but there's like a, a seam in the in the snow right here. And the way I played this level is I wanted to be strafing parallel to this at this point in time. Um, and I kind of wanted the seam to be leftish but not super left maybe running on top of it or maybe running to the right of it as long as you're parallel that's probably the most important thing and then uh here i typically want to get the mine to be just to the right of the snowbank so i'm a bit too far to the right um but it's no it's not too bad you can kind of adjust um another visual reference is this peak in the snow here you want to be to the left of it, but just barely. You don't want to be going too far left here and going into this divot in the snow. That loses a lot of time. I think you just want to be on top of this point or just to the left of it. I think just to the left of it allows you to actually get the mine throw. And uh, I, I look down until I get to the, the minimum peak here, and then I look up. And then what I do is I kind of get this, the peak of the snow to the center of my screen-ish, and then I do a small turn right to go to the bunker. and I try to throw the mine right after I do the turn. And it so happens that I'm at this like top of the peak sort of. Um, the throw itself, it's just an Arlene. Um, you know, it's hard to explain the Arlene, you just have to practice it. And you want to see the mine just briefly on the left side, just for like a frame. Uh, I guess you can do it pretty fast, so don't don't so don't be afraid of trying to do a fast throw. So the detonation, I try to detonate after I pass the bright band in the snow, just like that. However, I think I might have detonated too early or my angle was a little bit off. It's hard to tell in this particular run. And then the approach to the bunker, basically you want to kind of approach it from the bottom corner. You don't want to be too far to the right because then you won't have enough height. And then that means that you won't fall deep enough into, this, into the bunker roof. To actually open the door because the way this works is you're basically just opening the door through the ceiling and it only works if you're close enough to the door and the only way you can get close enough is if you have enough downward velocity such that you kind of dip into the ground because it's 
I don't know, bond bounces. So during the minimum of your bounce, you want to be really close to the door. Um, you can kind of do things to adjust your angle and try to aim at the door through the snow. Um, in this particular case, I had a really good angle. And so I had a feel for how to do this at this point in time. But yeah, I, I sort of imagined that there was a door that you can't see that's pretty deep down and I'm pressing B on it. And I found that it's really easy to accidentally press B too early. It's okay to actually wait a frame after the minimum of your bounce because that might get you closer to the door itself. Um, so, and, and you want to be looking at the correct angle that sort of helps to, like you want to actually be looking at the door itself. So I got it and with the door, you after you open the door, you just want to try to not get stuck on this corner here. Sometimes I feel like it's impossible to get, un, like you're going to get stuck no matter what, if it's like a late bounce or something like that, if you have a bad angle, or if you go too far into the middle, it's really hard to get out. I had a 46 like choke where I got stuck on this corner and I think it was just my angle is really shitty uh, when I was opening this door. So try to just take this pretty tight. And then uh, this mind switch here is switch to unarmed um, is a little tricky. You have to kind of do it a little later than you'd like, but you can't do it too late because then you lose a, a ton of time. So like right about now I'm switching weapons. And you just really want to go like up left. So there you go. So I'm just going to run through the next one with a little bit less pausing and just try to summarize kind of the cues. Uh, <clears throat> so I watched the whole second cinema, have mine out right away, take this line as close as I can, have really good strafing here if possible. Um, it helps a lot. So my line, I'm pretty parallel with the wall here. And let's see where the little dark spot in the snow is. It's pretty far left, so that means I'm a little far right, which is okay. It's actually not bad. I just need to do an adjustment here to make sure I'm parallel. The mine is just to the right of that snow bank right here. And I think that's really important. Um, the way that the mine is just to the right of this. I think that like every throw that I had, I feel like this happened. And a lot of the 46s have this too, where you're like strafing to this part of the snow corner. I think it's just a very good angle and it sets up the throw very nicely. I'm just to the left of this. I'm I'm a little bit to, I'm a little bit more left than maybe is optimal, but it's still set up nicely for the throw. So I get to the minimum, I look up, the snow is to the left of my middle a little bit, which is fine. I do the turn. That was a very fa I don't even know if I turned. Let's see. A little laggy there. Do that again. Look up. Turn. Do the throw. I detonate a little bit later this time. And I think it's really early. It's really easy to detonate the mine early. So don't be afraid of trying to detonate it just a little bit later than what feels right. Because you're probably throwing the mine from further. So uh, if, if you're having a good strafe line, I think. So you need to wait for the mine to get a little closer to the computer set. Uh, I got eight kind of late on this run. And then what you do, you know, the same deal. I just kind of press B right around now. And I do the quick jut out. And then I do the warp right about now. And there you go. That's pretty much 46. Um, like I said, the most important parts are the strafing. Um, the strafing and setting up for the mine throw, if you do that the same every time, your pace is going to be alright. The tricky part with the door and trying to warp it correctly, that's just... It, that just takes feel. So what I suggest is, you know, play out a lot of runs. Um, if, you don't get the, if you don't get the mine, try to open the door, you know, <clears throat> and then just really practice that uh, the warp. So... The strategy I had when getting this time was I spent the first day just trying to get a fail and I wasn't really trying to do a legit mind throw. Just trying to get the door open and do the weapon switch and kind of mock the mind throw, you know, but I wasn't practiced enough to get the fat, the fast good throw a lot. So once I got the 46 pace, then I started focusing on trying to get a good throw in there. And then once I started getting good throws, then I started working on w getting the mind to actually get to the comms. 
And then that kind of led me to working on my strafe lines. And so that's where I got here. It, is I have the whole picture of how the strafe lines tie into getting the pace and everything else. So I think that a really successful way of getting 46 is to just break it down into parts and then try to get good at the parts and then just add them up together. And I like I got like three A completions pretty quickly from uh, one after another when, uh, when I got this 46. So yeah, uh, it's not too hard. It's a little tight, but it's nothing crazier than like the old 48 uh, with the old mind throw. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.